hello together. My name is uh, Claudia Krummenacher. I'm an interaction designer based in Zurich. Today I'm going to talk about books. Um, Tom before mentioned different interfaces. I would say this one is, is one as well. Um, last year, I think there even was a talk about it. Um, the, Ole Rimoldi made a pos possibility how to make an export from HTML from Scubus. And this is kind of a pre-stage for creating an EPUB out of Scribus. For those who don't know EPUB, it's the main mm, format for um, using on ebook readers, where you can yeah, read a novel or whatever. So in this, in this process we were talking about it, a uh, question came up, will we continue to create conventional print products in the future? Or is print dying at some time because everybody will have devices like this and just read our books on those devices? Well, this question has been asked before. Um, I've read it, I think, first time when they, they had the, the Morse thing or when they, they invented the telephone, when they invented the radio. Every time somebody said, oh, nice, we don't need any newspapers anymore because we just can listen to it or we can, can see it in the television. So for the last century, I would say every, every 20 years, somebody said print is dying. Um, well, it's, it's not true. I think also this time it's not true, print will not die, um, but we will change, the way we use it will change a little bit because we now have all these new nice devices. And another reason why it's not dying, it's uh, unlike a music CD or a VHS cassette, an analog book is as well as the storage device, as the interface to read it. So it's two things combined in one. For all the other media, we, we store the content somewhere and we look at it in a different way on the screen or whatever. And those two things have not to be necessarily connected. So if you see paper as a storage device, you can easily say for some type of books, it will, it will always be the, and stay the best storage device because uh, paper can add, add some advantage. It, it smells, it, uh, it can be a precious object, you can hold it, you can give it as a gift. So I guess this will stay. So I think books that will stay in paper and ink that are mostly art books because those are precious, uh, precious objects. Then illustrated novels and print on demand will stay like this. Then books that only you have on hard drive on your device, novels. Nobody, those non-expensive novels you throw away after you read it. It's better to keep them on a device like this. All the other stuff, like non-fiction, scientific papers, graphic novels, newspaper, magazines, I think they will live in both media. So now, if we make an e-book, the, the storage device and the interface start splitting. This means we have to have a different way to design the, yeah, the book, make graphic design. Um, for those who are not designers here, uh, designing a book is about making rules, about grids, columns, fonts, size of pictures, and then apply the, the content you have to those rules and start playing with the rules. You have, uh, for normal paper, you have a um, kind of absolute way of designing. You say, my page is this big, my text is this big, my font is this size. So you have choices of, yeah, you have absolute things like 
you can see it here, 20 centimeters. So, you know, as a designer, you have absolute control over every page. For EPUBs, uh, now it's going to be the other way around. You have uh, relative values. You say, my, my text is about 75% wide of the, of the page. And this is necessary because uh, suddenly we don't know how big this, uh, the size of the paper is. So, for future tools now, I don't think that anybody like, like this exists yet, but we, we need something that would work for all those um, media that can be printed or read on those devices, I would say especially non-fiction, that I can make a design that works either printing or looking at, at the screen. And this me, I see two possibilities to do this. Either I continue designing as, as I did, then say export as HTML, and computer just does something, and then I see the result and have to adjust it. Really have to adjust it a lot. Or the other way around would be I start designing in liquid layouts. That means I only give relative uh, values. I don't know, th those people who are doing website will surely know the term um, liquid layout. It has been around for, for a while now. So, um, yeah, I would say to prepare our tools for creating books for the future, uh, we need a possibility to design in relative measurements. Um, I don't have an answer how, how you you would use this, there is also no project around, but there, there are a few possibilities I think you can guess. One of it is, is like, hey, why don't you use LibreOffice and make the HTML export possible? Not, it's a great tool, but not really for uh, designers. Or uh, why don't you write the HTML code yourself? Not everybody can do it. So, or, or we could do something else, or we could st um, start to try to uh, include it in Scribus. So, yeah, but I, I'm done here with the presentation, but I think the discussion in, yeah, will we'll start inside, but we'll need something like this. <laughs>